Uh, welcome to our podcast. I'm Dad's ex. And I'm the next. And today we we don't have a plan. Yeah, we don't have a plan. As per usual, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Um, More often than not, we're just winging it. Just winging it. Just like we're winging our lives and yeah. motherhood. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty on par for us. Yeah, that's okay. But we do have an update about my court stuff with yes. the lady who gave me life. And then took the life out of me. Just kidding. Wow. I mean, you're not wrong. Not far off. So Jess came with me on Wednesday, the tenth. We had court, uh, and I was super nervous. We both had to nervous pee before. <laughs> yes, <him>. we did. <laughs> she was like, "I gotta go to the bathroom." I was like, "Me too." Got a nervous pee. Well, and it's <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've been in a courthouse or like court in general so I kind of like forgot how the process worked because the last time I went to court there was when I took my previous landlord to small claims court Mm. and that was eight nine how old is Carly yeah it would have been like nine years ago yeah Uh, yeah that was a, a whole thing but it's like that there's a whole crowd of people that goes in with you so it was we were the only ones there we were the only ones that had that courtroom yeah it was real awkward. And you could see the courtroom on, like, a TV in the hallway. And we're, like, sitting outside, and I'm just, like, anxious the entire time because I haven't seen my mother in, in almost four years now. And just knowing her, she's going to be pissed. And, like, anyways. Yeah. Um, we were expecting, like, a very combative altercation yeah. if she showed up. So then we go inside finally and then we wait and then the judge comes in all that fun stuff and she didn't show up and I'm like oh cool like maybe this is gonna be like easy breezy yeah unfortunately Um, not unfortunately not um we I did really like the judge that I had though and I'm so thankful I got a different judge than who originally viewed my case which I'm so thankful for because he was really concerned for mine and the kids' well-being. And he explained, like, we can't move further with the hearing yet because we don't have proof that she's been served. And the police department did try to call me to get more information so that they could serve her because when they went to her place, she wasn't answering. So they, like, weren't sure if they had the right place. And so they called me, and I was like, this is the all the information you have yeah. is what i have like i haven't spoken to her in almost four years this was the return address on the letter that i got that has been her address for like the last 10 years now um, more than that so like this is all that i have but she never answered when they tried to serve her so because she hasn't been served technically they can't they have to there try has, again yeah there has to be a certain amount of notice yeah. When you're trying to put a restraining order on somebody. Yeah. I was, like, immediately frustrated um, because originally the temporary order got denied by the original judge. And this judge was, like, I don't know what the pre- what the previous judge reviewed. He, like, low-key threw the previous judge under the bus. And, like, judged them, yeah. <laughs> he was, like, I don't know what the previous judge reviewed, but, like, Based off what I've read, because he read the entire 15-page letter, and I know because he quoted it multiple times. <laughs> he did. I, I have a feeling he just, like, low-key really loves drama <laughs> and was just like, this is the juiciest thing case. I've ever read. <laughs> well, yeah, because even when he rescheduled the court date, he was like, this is my, this is my case. No other yeah. judge can go over this case. Like, he wants to see it through. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's just because, from what I understand, it's only him and one other judge, and he doesn't want the other judge to make a poor decision on my Mm -hmm. part again. Uh, Yeah, he was surprised that my temporary order got denied. So he overruled that and um, approved the temporary order. He's like, no, you and your kids, in my opinion, are in immediate danger. Um, So I'm going to approve the temporary order. Um, So that was effective as of Wednesday and will be good for two weeks. And then we... Apparently, you can get served via email and social media now. I had no idea. Me neither. Because they were, he was asking for like her social media accounts and her email addresses so that they could try to serve her that way. Because if they can get proof that she got that, then we can move forward um, with the yeah. permanent protection order. 
Um, so that was really cool. And he's like, we're going to try, he's like, but I'm not only going to do that. Like, we're going to try everything that we're, we're going to send the police back out to try to serve her. We're going to try to serve her this way. And then he also gave me a copy of everything with a proof of service um, paperwork to have somebody who I know if they're willing to try to go serve her as well. Because maybe she'll answer the door for somebody else that's not, not police. The police. So. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. That next court date is on the 24th. So it's still like a stay tuned. And then if, if there's still no proof of service at that point and she doesn't show up, then it has to get extended another two weeks where they'll do like a public yeah thing. it's they have to do like a publication yeah. where like in the newspaper or something or i'm assuming so it's like the newspaper so anymore but this, okay. yeah he made it sound like because he kept using the term like publication yeah which it's like well where are you where are you gonna publish this my only thought would be like the newspaper yeah so just to like, like put maybe, it out there maybe to the social community. media Who yeah knows? <laughs> but yeah so then that's the next step and if she still doesn't show up to then that would be like the third court hearing mm -hmm. if she still doesn't show up to that one then they've exhausted all their options and they are able to move forward but honestly from like the way that he spoke and the concern he had in like his tone of voice for me and the kids it sounds like he's already made up his decision on how the court case is gonna go which made me feel really good too yeah um and he even like brought up the that i'm not safe he's like she literally tells you in your letter that you're not safe and has means to find you yeah no matter she what. has the way she put it it's like i have my ways of keeping yeah. my eyes on you or something like that and like he he said that and yeah like and he was like so like you guys are not safe and he even was like he's like i'm checking this box that i've never checked before and um, I don't even remember what the box was. I was so like I don't know. We like interference or something like that. I don't remember, but we got to a point where we were just like, uh huh, yes, thank you. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it was also like I wasn't expecting it to take that long, especially for her to not show up. It was like an hour. We were there over yeah. an hour. Yeah, it was crazy. And it's we're sitting at the table in front of the judge, and you're not supposed to have your cell phone out. And I had to work at court was at three, and I had to work at four. And I assumed that we would have plenty of time, especially because she didn't show up. I thought yeah. it would be like a real quick, whoop. I'm literally staring at the judge, like slowly, like texting my boss on my phone, like making eye contact to make sure he's not yelling at me. Cause I'm like, I'm gonna be late for work. Well, I'm so he sorry. even had me pull my phone out at one point yeah. to like look up her Facebook accounts and um and things like that. So Yeah. And so I'm just like sitting there. <laughs> Yeah, she was. <laughs> Make sure funny. that I didn't get in trouble. Because it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to get me in trouble because I was in court? Like... Yeah. Yeah. So that was, and then I had to freaking, ha... I'm coaching Jesse's soccer team right now. And we do practice at five until 6.15. And then I go to work and it's a whole thing. So yeah. I we only have one vehicle that fits all the kids. I obviously had to have the vehicle to take all of my children to my sister-in-law's house, drop them off. Nick can only take two kids at a time. So he gets, he had school this last week. So he gets out of school and goes and picks up Baker and Lincoln. So then I have to go pick up the girls and Jesse. And I like get, it's like 4.15 by the time I leave. I have to pick up my twins, pick up Jesse, and make it to soccer practice by five <laughs> oh, God. which is like doable but at the same time like it was just really stressful yeah so yeah i like raced to my sister-in-law's luckily she only lives like five minutes from the place that we do soccer practice at and then i like hurry up and getting the girls in their car seats and yelling at jesse to go get in the car and book it over there and then i'm like jesse's carrying our football duff or our football our soccer duffel bag and our soccer balls i'm carrying the girls on each <laughs> arm and like walk into the field oh my gosh it was a whole uh, thing that's hilarious yeah but the field that we practice on is like on the other side of the fence is my sister's house it's her yard Haley. oh yeah and so she came out and stole one of the, one of the girls for she stole parker for a little bit and <laughs> was hanging out with her and oh that's cute yeah it was pretty fun and then my assistant coach's wife held one of them for a while because then i had to take cora out at one point so i held one she held one and it worked out yeah so, you just you gotta do what you gotta do it was busy 
is your hair done last. Yeah. We also both got our hair done last week. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, so you have new hair. My I hair's hair. kind of the same. I just got my color redone. Yeah. So I still have. I was like, I got mine colored. It looks red now. It, it definitely looks, looks a lot more red. It was pink. And yeah. they're supposed to be purple in there, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to see in the. But it's really only like oh, one. There's two spots. And it's definitely like in the back. Hidden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I got bangs. Yes. So this was Nick's response when I got home. I walk in. And Jesse's like hyping me up. Nice. He's Let's go, Jesse. Like, oh, Mom, your hair. I love it. It <laughs> looks so good. And I'm like, thanks. They stuff it. Okay. Little gentleman. I know. He's so sweet. And then I walk into my bedroom where Nick is. And oh. he's like, you got bangs. <laughs> and I was like. Cool, so I'm guessing you don't like my hair then. <laughs> That's not what I said. I was like, well, Way to you go, didn't Nick. have to say that. You literally said, you got bangs. Oh, man. Because he's always told me he doesn't like bangs and he didn't want me to get them. And I was always like, been there, done that, never doing it again. Fuck bangs, hate them. And then I like saw a TikTok and I'm like, am I crazy or are these bangs really cute? Do I want these bangs? And Jess is like, they yes, aren't really cute. You want those bangs. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I am one of those people that goes back and forth where I'll have, like, bangs and then not have bangs. And, yeah, like, I go back and forth all the time. So, it's like, yeah, you want to get bangs? Do it. Yeah. Just and don't so, do it how Carly did, where she fucking cut her own hair. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you that Baker cut his fucking hair. Wait, ha what hair? I what? What? Okay. So... My new work schedule is kicking my butt, and I'm very tired. Okay, I'm very, very tired. Rest in peace to Jesse's peeps. Yeah, yeah, Baker got into <laughs> his peeps and bit just the head heads off of all of them. So, which is such a toddler thing to do. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna eat an entire peep. I'm just gonna bite the head off of every single one in the package. I'm wondering if he just thought nobody would notice. <laughs> There's just a package of headless peeps. Yeah. Anyways, it's kicking my butt. So, like, if I'm sitting, I'm, like, most likely, like, dozing off. Mm -hmm. You have to, like, I'm just, like, moving. so tired. Well, during one of these times, Baker got into Nick's drawer that has his, like, what are they? Clippers. Clippers, yeah. Yeah. And which has the smallest guard on it because oh, we God. just shaved the boys' heads. Yeah. So he, like, went back over his hair? In one little chunk in the back. So I didn't notice it. and and Well, because his hair's still short. Short. So here's the thing. All day, he'd been telling me, Mommy, I cut my... So he told on himself. Didn't even fucking... Rip. All day, he... Mommy, I cut my hair. Mommy, I cut my hair. And I was like, yeah, buddy, we did have to cut your hair. Your hair's very short now. <laughs> And he, I cut my hair. He's like see, trying see, to tell he's you. He's like trying to tell me. And he's like, <laughs> see, mommy? And I'm like, yes, buddy, I know. Mommy cut it. And he goes, no, mommy, I cut my hair. And I'm like, okay, Baker, I see it, yes. All fucking day, I do not notice. And then Nick is home, and I we're like doing something. And I'm like, oh, my God. And Nick's like, what? And I was like, he really did cut his fucking hair. <laughs> There's, like, a little chunk out the back missing of his already, like, really short hair. So, like, luckily it's not that noticeable. But. I mean, for you to not notice it all day. Yeah. That's so So, it's funny. like, he just did one spot. And then it was like, oh, put it back. And he's like, oh, I don't want to get caught. Oh, my God. But he told on himself. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, we cut your hair. Like. You just like reinforced that behavior all fucking day, and he's gonna do it again now. I don't, yeah. Oh well. At least he's a boy, and I can just shave his head. It's not like he's Carly and. Oh god, I know. I still. And because I had talked about it like quite a few episodes ago when it happened, and it's just like we we went and got haircuts this last weekend, and Kayla thankfully she took like thinning shears to it, mm -hmm. so it's not as like blunt. But it still sucks because she just has like this little fucking hair that. And I also I need to teach this kid how to actually like do her hair because she just puts it up in a ponytail and she uses water. She'll just get a cup of water and splash it on her head to try and like hold that little piece of hair back. I'm like, oh, 
You're just going to like make your hair super greasy and I know. So they got their hair done and she sends me a picture of Carly's hair and it's in a ponytail and I'm like, what the <sighs> fuck? Why is it in a ponytail? Yeah. This is like Carly like lives in a ponytail yeah, right her, now. And the, she's constantly in a ponytail. Yeah. Like, any pictures of her, I'd say in the last nine months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nine, nine, oh, nine yeah. months. Oh yeah. Easily. Ponytail. Every single every single day is a ponytail. Yeah. So we get Which, her hair professionally done. And they curl it and it always looks so cute. So cute. I'm like, why is her hair in a ponytail? Was like my response. Yeah. And she's like, Well, because she's going to this thing and she wanted her hair up. And I was like mm -hmm. Yeah, because she had uh, like a little like uh grandma date. Grandma date right after. And so Carly didn't want her hair down. Because she was going to the um, the Spark Museum that we have in town, which has like Tesla coils and like a lot of cool electricity things. Uh, and yeah, Carly just knew that her hair was going to get annoying. But it's just like it sucks. So you one day it looks cute. And it's yeah, getting cute up and a curled, and you're just going to throw it up in a ponytail. But that's oh, just yeah, that's Carly like, right we now. We need to at least teach her how to actually a ponytail I know or like how to fix it because that's the other thing is like she doesn't fix it throughout the day no so, so it just, she just gets like, it just gets like more hair is getting pulled out and it's not it's like a low ponytail yeah and then, so then the ponytail slowly is moving back where it's like at the tips of by the end of the day it's at like the tip yeah at her ends and she won't like redo it she'll just grab her ponytail and like yank yeah. and so then of so course she gets all <laughs> frizzy and bunched up oh and God. then she sits there and wonders why her hair is such a knotted mess at the end of the day yeah it like it blows her, her mind yeah. and it's like mm, maybe because of how you treat it all day yeah <sighs> yeah that'll do it yeah we're just going through a very difficult phase with her right now all so, around yeah she's definitely hitting the preteen uh, i so I started my period when I was very young. I was 10 years old when I started mine. And so Carly turns 10 in July and she's starting to show signs. And so I, it just, uh, it's begun. And I just wish she would have gone a couple more years. Yeah. Because this preteen stage is rough. Yeah. Because we're dealing with the mood swings and the, overreactions the crying the slamming of door just like very typical teenage shit but she's nine like and just like to everybody too just like yeah it's not it's not just solely like we when we went to barnes and noble a few weeks ago mm -hmm. we had um she was Harley being snippy with jesse yeah too. he like found a book that he really wanted um and she was like oh yeah cool book and I was like, Miss Ma'am, we were going to go out to dinner afterwards. And I was like, you're making me not want to go have dinner with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was not nice. Like, we've been going through looking at all the books that you're interested in and that you like. And Jesse finally gets his section and you're being a freaking twat waffle about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because she and she's always had this problem. I, I mean, ever since, like, you've known her, too, where she she has only child syndrome. She was the only child for a really long time, and that's still showing up as a common theme. Is but she's like not getting accustomed to the fact that we do have to split our attention to the other children in our lives. But she was an only child until what she was five, and yeah, so we're really she's just. She, she requires a lot of attention. So much attention. And it's it gets really exhausting and disheartening as a parent where it's like, I... You constantly feel like you're not doing enough. Yes. Because it's... The mom guilt is so real. But then you, like, it's hard. Like, she'll, like, she'll say, like, well, I just... He just wants more and more. And, like, I went through this with Jesse for a while, too, where it just felt like I wasn't giving him mm -hmm. enough. Because it was like, we'd get done doing one thing. And he'd be like, well, now can we do this? Well, now can we do that? And it's like, bro, I'm tired. Like, well, and it's not only mm -hmm. that, but it's like, I have other shit to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, my only, like, I have more hats. Like, I am not just Carly's mom. Like, I'm also going to school full time. Mm -hmm. I have Keaton. I have shit that I have to do around the house. Like, I can't spend 100% of my time with you. 
And it's not that I don't spend time with her. Like this week is a great example of that where mm -hmm. Wednesday I picked her up. I even made special plans with Will to come pick up Caden. So he met us in town. And that couldn't have been Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah. Wednesday yes. we had court. <laughs> that is right. Thursday. Uh, yeah. So I had Will meet us up in town, pick up Caden. So it was literally just Carly and I. And I had picked her up directly from school and so we're talking 4 30 and we didn't come home until like eight o'clock like we were out all afternoon we were shopping for jesse's birthday present she needed some stuff for school um we got like her classroom some snacks and stuff like that and we like stopped and had dinner so like one-on-one -on -one quality time where it was just me and her mm -hmm. and then friday she asked if we were going to do, we do like therapy time every other week. Her therapist is currently on maternity leave. And so to make up for that, like Carly and I just have one-on-one -on -one time for an hour every two weeks to like keep her in that, in schedule. that schedule. Yeah. So then Thursday, she asks me, Friday, Friday God, my week is like all fine. What's today? Today's Saturday. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're, it's fine. <laughs> But yeah, so then, so this would have been last night. She asks me, well, what are we doing for therapy time? And I looked at her and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, well, can we go to Starbucks? I lost my shit. Because it's just like, I, I don't know what else to do. I just spent four and a half hours with this kid one-on-one -on -one time. And it like was not good enough for her. Because then when I told her like, we we've already done our therapy time i had homework that was due last night so i needed to sit down and do my school work and she like got so discouraged and upset like i personally attacked her because mm -hmm. i said i couldn't do it and i'm just like bro what what else but am I she supposed also to do? sees it as like a treat though too yeah and that's why I, like, lost my shit on her. I mean, I didn't, like, literally lose my shit, but I did have a very serious conversation with her where I was like, you don't take it seriously. You don't talk to me during these therapy sessions. Which is what it's meant for. Which is what it's meant for. Like, you just see it as an opportunity to, like, go out and get spoiled. And I'm just, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like, until you can take it seriously and treat it like the therapy session it's supposed to be, I'm just, I'm not going to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Because we go out of our way to make sure that Carly gets one-on-one -on -one time every single week. Because whether it's, you know, her therapy time or whatever, Saturdays is family game night. And Caden's just not old enough. And so it's literally time. Like he's there, but he's not He's there, but he doesn't play the games. And so this is an hour and a half where William and I sit down and we play a board game with Carly. Like, we make sure that she has this dedicated one-on-one -on -one time separate from Caden. Mm -hmm. And it's still, like, not good enough for her. Yeah. Because then all throughout the week, can we play a game? Can we play a game? Can we mm -hmm. play a game? And it's like, I, like, I'm at my wit's end because I just don't know what else to do for her. Yeah. Because I, I cannot give her 100% of my attention. Yeah. That's exhausting. The only other thing to do is, like, give her things that she can do on her, like, on her own. Like, hey, you know, can't do that right now, but, why, like, you could go do this. Yeah, well, and that's what we've been doing is, like, she, so she has to read for 30 minutes, right. you know, um, for homework every night. And so it's, like, we'll make those suggestions. But it's, like, this kid also has so much shit in her room yeah. of things that she, like, she has toys. She has arts and crafts. She has Lego. She has painting, um, coloring, books. coloring books, stickers, plate. Like there is a lot for her in there her is. room. And I even bought her a special bed that is like a loft bed with a desk built in underneath. So she has her own space where she can do that stuff. Like she's just not comfortable being by herself. Yeah, she's not independent. No. At she's all. She's very codependent. Yes. And she always has been, really. Yeah. She's... It was really heavily on Nick, I feel like. And then 
because I never really like noticed how bad the codependency was until she like didn't go over to Nick's anymore and now she's like leached onto me and I I feel really bad because it's like I'm her mom and I probably didn't notice it because since she was gone half the time when she was with you it made sense like you were like okay yeah let's like you were putting like yeah you know i guess more aware of like the time you spent with her not more aware you know you get what i'm saying though yeah because we had like a 50 50 split so so it was like cool this is my time the only time that i get with you i'm gonna focus on you yeah because now that you have her all the time all the time that makes sense actually i didn't even think about that so she's so so like she always has been doing it you just it never crossed your mind because you only had her half the time yeah like it never registered right what it was yeah whereas now i'm like dude i love you but like i need some fucking space yeah (laughs) god yeah for sure yeah because it goes into like the boundaries thing too like it's hard because with the adhd and not being medicated like she has really bad impulse control she Mm -hmm. has a hard time respecting boundaries and not listening and so it's just like taking those extra steps to make sure that she's listening to her brother or like when Maggie comes over, it's the same thing with Maggie uh, or my mom. She'll just cling to them. And it's like, dude, you need to fucking stop. But well, I have to remind her too, like Mm -hmm. in certain situations where I'm like, okay, I know that you're excited to see this person, but like, cause she still will like jump at people as if she's four, like being in Baker's age. She will, but she's so tall. She's so tall. She's nine years old. Yeah. Like, we're way past the age of you needing to be picked up. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, being able to lunge at people like that. So, it's, like, I always have to remind her, like, hey. Yeah. I know you're very excited, but, like, we're not going to, like, lunge at these people. We're not going to jump at them. You can give them a hug. Yeah. But you're not going to be picked up. And, but it's just so hard, though, because every I feel like every single grandparent in her life enables the shit out of her yep. like my mom does it maggie does it i know that tony and sheila did for a really long time i don't know if they still do but it's just like the enabling well, now that I, like tell her have, like tell her she doesn't jump up at them yeah and stuff anymore but but it's still like the clinginess like maggie will just like sit there and let her just hold on to her the for fucking 15 minutes before she leaves and it gets to the point where like Caden's done he said bye he's gone playing and I'm sitting there being like Carly get the fuck off her she needs to leave yeah like she's trying to go home and you're clinging to her stop yeah and she gets all mopey and like disheartened about it and it's that she's never gonna see her again right and that's like the victim mentality that i was talking to carly about this morning where it's like everything is out to get her everything is a personal attack she's like taking it very very personally if people leave or say anything like remotely negative to her like it's just such a difficult time which makes it so hard to have a conversation with her too oh yeah because i can't do the defensiveness because like Mm -hmm. i'm not attacking you so why are you getting defensive Mm -hmm. i just i don't get it so preteens they're great yeah (laughs) have fun with that (laughs) whereas like with jesse right now it's Uh, a lot of the like which like really we haven't been going through that much with him recently mm -mm. It's more so just like he's. I feel like he gets like a, he's very independent to where like yeah he's fine being by himself as he's long like as he the has, polar opposite of Carly yeah, but like that was part of like him being an only child was like I couldn't always sit and play with him constantly yeah. like I had stuff to do on the house or like I you know was my own person too and wanted to read or whatever it might have been and so he learned how to play by himself when he was really little because it was only him so he is very independent like he went through a phase where like he constantly was like well can we do this can we do that and 
he's like he's over it now he still like asks to spend time together obviously yeah um and i feel bad because i just like either don't have the time or i'm just so tired like he asked me if we could watch he's been reading the hunger game series and mm. so he read the first one we watched the movie because he's never seen the movies he read the second book and so now he wants to watch the second movie and he asked if we could watch it this weekend and i was like i will do my best like that's all i I, like i feel bad because it's like that's all i can give you right now is i will do my best because we have you know so we have our first soccer game today like i have to work sunday sunday we also have i have my book club and we have his birthday party and yeah it's a busy week and like and i'm only sleeping like two to three and a half hours a night with this new work schedule so it's Mm -hmm. like I'm so tired all I did yesterday because I was off yesterday my off days are are Friday and Saturday nights all I did was sleep yeah like Nick couldn't even he will try to wake me up three separate times to come have dinner and I could not like I was so tired and then I woke up he ran and got me Taco Bell came home ate it I played on my switch for a little bit went back to sleep and slept until 6 30 this morning like damn I had to catch up on all the sleep that I'm missing throughout the week that it's like mm-hmm. I knew that I wasn't going to be up for if I sat down to watch a movie with him last night I'd have passed out oh yeah there would have been no way and to him he hates when because I am really bad about falling asleep watching movies anyways and he hates when I fall asleep watching a movie with him because it's like well you're not really spending time with me you're sleeping yeah and that's valid that's you know 100 percent. but it's like I feel bad because like I don't have as much time um and I have three times as many kids as Jess has so yeah. I feel bad because it was only me and him for like just me and him mm-hmm. for the longest time and I did do so much with him when he was little we went on date nights all the time and we played games together all the time and I just don't do as much with him anymore which like that mom guilt gets me so bad um because I'm just like I have so many other kids and I'm tired yeah and, I don't know. So I need to do something with him soon. I just need it. And we've just been so freaking busy lately. Like, yeah, our schedules are so jam packed. March was like nuts. Yeah. And like April is starting to get to that point, too. Mm-hmm. Well, and especially now that you have like soccer starting up. And... Yeah. So every Saturday is a game. Yeah. Uh, and I just know that Fridays are going to be days for me to sleep. So it's like I'm really only going to have Saturdays mm-hmm. and like. Part Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, to do part anything. of Sundays. So it really sucks, but luckily he's a good sport about it. Yeah, because he's not nearly like anywhere near Carly. Like I feel like there's a couple of bouts of like attitude, but it's like well, that's, that's the, the only thing that that's the only thing him. that we're really dealing with right now is he has like the. Um, he is very cool yeah exactly <laughs> he holds this demeanor about him that i'm like dude you don't need to put on a show for your mom oh my gosh he got so awkward okay so two things last night so nick and i watched the show called oh code my cam. God. i still does it was so up. funny we were watching a show called code blue cam it's on youtube it's a like police show mm-hmm. we love it um, and so Nick had put it on and Jesse was like getting ready for bed. This was like when I had woken up and finished yeah. my Taco Bell and everything. Jesse had woken up or um, Jesse was getting ready for bed and Jesse comes in to say goodnight. And the guy that they were like arresting on Code Blue Cam, the guy is like, suck my dick. I need my dick sucked. And Jesse. Copy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> whatever um and jesse started busting up laughing like he was like (laughs) such typical like boy behavior he goes he goes oh it's so funny how i come in here and he goes suck my i need my suck he wouldn't even say it himself (laughs) oh my god it was so funny and then he's just like i had to tell him so i was trying to tell him like make sure you bring your soccer stuff out in the morning so we can wash it and I just couldn't even I was laughing so hard and he's like walking to his room and you just hear him like giggling and laughing (laughs) but then today I'm like putting my pants on and I try to shut my bedroom door okay I really do but I have a four-year-old who 
My bedroom yeah. is his bedroom, okay? Yeah. And so he I always, feel like between Baker and Lincoln, like... Well, ba- Lincoln doesn't know how to use the door handle yet, so oh, it's Baker, right? Yeah. It's only Baker. Lincoln will sit there and hit the door. Um, so I, like, shut my door to get dressed. Baker opened it at some point. So I'm, like, literally mid-putting my pants on, and Jesse's, like, trying to ask us something. And then I answer him, he goes away. I'm, like, still putting my pants on, and I, like, couldn't button my jeans. And these are, like, my jeans that fit me really comfortably. And I've been feeling a lot bigger the last couple of days. Bigger than I felt, like, just a week ago. Interesting. Because, like, these jeans fit perf- like fit perfectly a week yeah. ago. And now I had to, like, suck it in. To- so I'm, like, what is happening? Do you think it's just, like, bloating from, like... I fucking hope it's just bloating. Cause I'm well, so- I was, I was supposed to say- start my period a couple days ago, and I haven't started it yet. Yeah, so it makes me think it's just bloating at yeah. that point watch me be the only person on earth who gets pregnant when they're too like, removed you you literally cannot get pregnant like, you literally cannot Nick keeps going i swear because he goes i haven't started yet because he he knows he he's he's the one <laughs> it's the like other that, day, that paranoia he's the one the other day that was like hey you should probably pack some pads to take them to work and I, he's like you're supposed to be starting your period soon <laughs> he's like tracking and making sure yeah and i was like oh okay <laughs> But I still have it, and so I'm... Well, have you been having, like, regular cycles since having the procedure done? I don't remember. I don't... I hardly remember last week. Do you not track your cycle? Now that I can't get pregnant? No. No, I don't. I'm... Actually, you know what? That is valid. That is valid. (laughs) But that Now that I'm not supposed to be able to get pregnant. That means that you now have to deal with the consequences of, well, it's just gonna... Period's gonna show up when it shows up. Apparently, Nick is tracking it. Um, but anyway, so I'm like trying to put my pants on and I asked Nick, I'm like, do I look bigger? Like, does it look like I've gotten bigger? Why would you do <laughs> you Why like, would you do that to like, Nick? <laughs> Poor Nick, you just like fucking set a trap right in front of him. He's sitting there and he's like not really saying anything. He's like, I don't Smart man. He goes, he goes, I don't know. And I was like, what do you mean you don't know? You're the one who knows my body, like the most you you know my body the most and jesse goes oh my god <laughs> Ew. And he's like he was like in the kitchen getting like a dildo or something and he hears this and he's like oh my god awkward that's gross Ew. <laughs> oh my god it was so funny which is so funny because it's like we don't even like mean it in that way but no. it was just like because it's like Will has seen me, as Will so eloquently loves to put it, he's seen my guts and buckets. That's I had what a, Nick says, too. Yeah. Like, I don't know why the boys are so obsessed with that, but it's yeah. just like, whatever. So it's like they have seen, like, very intimate moments yeah. of us, of, like, trying to recover from C-sections, which yeah. is, like, probably the most intimate thing that you can do in your relationship is have to rely on another person after getting a C-section, because that is some brutal that's actually like the first time that i had to go to the bathroom in front of william because i had no other choice oh i I, nick hates it but i go to the bathroom with the door open (laughs) and nick hates it so much (laughs) he's like can you just shut the door our bathroom's so small though when you have that many littles though like you have to like be able to keep an ear out before the little oh well i mean I go to the bathroom with the door open all the time. Especially, I, I did it before Nick and Carly moved in. Jesse and I both went to the bathroom with the door open. And when Nick and Carly moved in, we both had to adjust to shutting the door. <laughs> That's so funny. But it's like my bathroom is in my bedroom around the corner. So it's like nobody's going to just like walk by. And your bathroom's the same way. Yeah. So it's like, what's the big deal? Unless Nick is like awkwardly standing at the bathroom well, door. He's like... not, but our but the toilet fa- is faces our bed. Oh, I did not know that. So he'll be like, Do you have to lock eyes with me while you're pooping? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that you're t- <laughs> That's alpha shit right there. <laughs> you're like claiming you mine at least faces parallel to the no, bed mine doesn't mine <laughs> the bed. So <laughs> oh, that's that's fantastic yeah. well and it's like i just i i don't like shutting the door our bathroom is so small that it makes me feel like claustrophobic yeah, i feel very trapped which is so weird that i feel that way because i can get mris like nobody's business doesn't bother me does not bother me 
Yeah. Totally fine, right? Totally fine. But a bathroom. But a bathroom. It's just so it's so narrow. Mm -hmm. It's so small. Yeah. And <sighs> I don't know. I just don't like it. Well, and it's like there's no point here because even if I do shut the door. Caden fucking Kool-Aid mans the door every fucking yeah. time. Like, he's, sup, mom? How's it going? But if I leave the door open, Caden's nowhere to be found. Yeah, same. Like, he will same not bother me. Come in. But if the door is shut, then Caden will try and join me in the bathroom. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. But yeah, I just... But yeah, so in a case that he's always like, meh, why can't you just shut the door? And That's then, like, so he funny. won't, like, pee or anything in front of, like, he won't. He uses the kids' bathroom. He never, the only time he uses our bathroom, which is, again, in our bedroom, yeah. is if Jesse is in the bathroom. That's so interesting. There's been, like, a couple of times where he's had, but he always shuts the door. Even, like, yeah. even if he's just peeing. That's so interesting. And I know that there are people out there who, like, that is, like, a very strong boundary for them. Like, they will not, like, that is meant to be private time. But it's just for me personally, like I have given birth in front well, of. What's my thing? I'm like, yeah. Like if I've given birth in front of you, like <sighs> you've seen me at my literal worst, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Well, and that's why it's actually fucking Nick, I feel like, has always been kind of squeamish that way. Cause when I was, I had Carly vaginally and I had Caden C section. Well, when I had Carly, Nick was very disgusted by the fact that I pooped during labor. Really? But it's like, it's so common. That's Literally so everybody funny. does it. But Nick was like, yeah, you pooped. And I was like, and? You know how hard you have to bear down? Yeah, like there's so much well, that pushing was... that you have to do. Like, of course I pooped. That was literally when I had Lincoln when the paramedic or when the EMTs walked in. I just kept going, I'm so sorry. And they were like, why? And I was like, because I pooped on my bed. Because <laughs> I was like already starting to push because my contraction, like you're, you can't oh, stop yeah. that. Like when your contractions oh, no. are to the point that it's like your body's telling you to push, you just have to push. Like, yeah. That's just. That's what, like you trying you, to fight mother nature at yeah, that point. Like, that's, a, you that's a fight you're going to lose. Yeah. You can't just not push when your body's literally screaming at you to push. And so I did, and and luckily I had told Nick like put a fucking t towel under my butt because yeah. I'm about to shit on our bed. <laughs> I'm I, just gonna title this episode "Everybody Poops." Everybody poops. Everybody poops. Yeah, um, but I, I don't think that Nick's really like squeamish about it. He just thinks that it's awkward and weird that like I'll be in the bathroom. Yeah, and he'll and he can see me. Because, I just, I love because that. whenever our toilet gets clogged, he's the one who fixes it, not me. I guess that's the, yeah, because I do the same thing because with Because after William. Baker. That's William's job. Yeah. After, I don't do that shit. After Baker. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. Uh-uh. Well, after Baker, you're on like, or after Baker. After a C-section, you're on like. Oh, and stuff like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You have to take and like stool softeners you have to take and shit. Well, and you have to do that after having a baby vaginally too. But. I just like my body I've always struggled with going to the bathroom um ever since I was a kid like it's always been a struggle and I'll get like constipated really easily and so especially after a surgery uh, my body gets scared to go to the bathroom oh it's so, like a like a trauma response yeah like so some like sort. I won't go so like after mm. I had Baker it took over a week before I went I remember bathroom. this yeah and it was like giving birth Whew. it was so bad and, and women out there know who have given birth. The first one after birth is terrifying. It was so, so fucking bad. Uh, and so I'm so glad I'm done having kids. That's could, the worst part. It would not flush. <laughs> so it sorry was, to all the men who are watching, but women understand. Yeah, it was so bad. And that it was so bad that Nick named it. He was like, <laughs> that deserves a name. <laughs> I think he named it Hector. <laughs> so now, so now when he knows that like I haven't gone for a while, or I'll be like, "All right, you have another Hector in there. Hector's coming to visit." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> I love that. Oh this, man, this episode got a lot more intimate. And it it than really did. I think we thought we were. Yeah, we did not have a plan, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty bad. Okay, well, while we're 
we're on the topic of pooping. Yep. Uh, we are dealing with potty training right now. Woo! <laughs> One of us is being more successful than the other currently. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, really, I'm actually surprised that Baker yeah. is... Because is... I feel like Baker and Kaden were the same for a really long time. Where it yeah. was like, right now, any mention of the word toilet or going potty throws Kaden into a fucking tailspin like he yeah. just wants no part of it he's just not ready yeah and whereas like when we used to ask baker like oh do you want to go potty he'd just be like no and he like hated getting his butt changed like mm -hmm. he would hide or same um like if you say like hey let's go change your butt he'd go you can't catch me and then he'd run away yeah. and so like i was like cool this is like never gonna happen he's never gonna yeah. be ready. And so I was like, well, we're just not going to push it. Because um, I know that that, like, backfired with Carly. It real did. With um, Carly, she got to the point where she was, like, very scared of going to the bathroom. And so she wasn't, like, fully potty trained until she was om almost six. Like, it took a long time. Like, she would go pee, but anytime she had to poop, like, there was, it was just problems galore. Yeah. Uh but yeah, so I was like, I'm just not going to push it. And like, he had underwear. So I'd be like, oh, look at your underwear. Like, don't you want to wear these? And he'd be like, mm, no. <laughs> like, just not interested. No. Or he'd just want to wear it like over his diaper. And I was like, or over his pull up. And I was like, well, maybe this will help like getting him to like want to wear it. So mm -hmm. I'd let him do that. And then more recently, I think what has helped get like gain his interest is um, first, I bought him, well, no, first he started saying like I want to go to school with Jesse. I want to go to school yeah. with Jesse. Like I want to be like Jesse, get my backpack and go to school. And Jesse and I would tell him, well, if you want to go to school, like you have to be, you have to use the big boy potty in order to go to school. You can't be in a diaper. And so just every time he says he wants to go to school, we reiterate that fact of like, well, you need to go in the big boy potty. And then I bought him. We're real into PJ Mask right now. Um, so I bought him some PJ Mask underwear, which fucking underwear is expensive. Can we just? <laughs> It's really? so bad. Like, why does it need to be so expensive? Um, Especially for, like, toddlers where it's, like, they're going to get dirty. They're going to get stained easily. Yeah. Because, like, the, the potty training process is not pretty and delicate. No. So you're having to buy a lot of it. And yeah. it's so ungodly expensive. Yeah, it is. Anyway, so I bought them some, especially if you're getting, like, character underwear yeah because at like, that point you're paying for the brand right but it's like at this that's like what helped get baker into it was like he was like mm -hmm. ooh, pj mask underwear like cat boy and like wanted mm -hmm. to w start wearing them and so we he's been wearing them and last week we did a little bit with him where it was like we'd have him wear underwear in the morning no accidents was going on the potty and then it when nick would like put him down for a nap he'd put him in a pull-up and then he just like never put him back in underwear yeah um but then the last few days i've been putting him in underwear and he's been going and he'll tell me i gotta go potty i gotta go potty and it's so cute too because he like wants his privacy he's like go away mommy go away <laughs> okay call me when you're we're done. just fucking annoying because the they won't give shut us privacy right. when we're going to shut the bathroom the door, mommy shut the door so yeah so i'll go in and i'll check on him and we had to move we did have to move the toilet paper up though because he was just wanting to like pull all of it down oh, and like yeah. we, he was gonna clog a toilet with toilet paper so yeah so it's going really well he had he had an accident this morning before i left mm -hmm. um but nick just texted me and said that he just went poop in the potty and that he hasn't had any more accidents so it's like it's going really well so i just Good ordered job, him Baker. i just ordered him some more underwear some hot wheels underwear <laughs> So he'll hopefully be really excited about that. But honestly, I think just waiting until he was ready and not forcing it on him. Yep. And then also, like like I said, him saying that he wants to do something and us like saying, well, like this is something that you have to be potty trained for. And yeah. getting underwear that like with things on it that interest them that want make them want to wear it, I think really helps. Yeah, because that's the thing with Caden. And it... It boggles my mind because they hate getting their diaper changed and their butt changed. But it's like, cool, if you don't want me to change your diaper, then go to the fucking bathroom on the toilet. Mm -hmm. Like, But they just, like, haven't put those pieces together yet. 
And so I'm taking a very, very similar approach where I'm waiting until Caden is ready because it's just, it's not worth the fight. Like I'm not going to fight him over going to the or bathroom. To deal with the not being potty trained for years. Yeah. Like I'm just, I'm not dealing with it. And I wish that like other people in our family would get on the same page because the amount of judgment that I'm getting from my parents, like my mom will make snide comments about it. Maggie has actually gone so far as to buy like potty training products for Caden, even though we had a very clear conversation that I was respecting Caden's boundaries and was going to wait until he told me he was ready. Uh, yeah, that was that was a whole thing. I was very fucking yeah. upset about that because it's yeah. like, do not cross, like, don't parent my kid. Yeah, you are not his parent. You are not respecting my boundaries. Like, I, I'm not going to confuse Caden with having somebody else come in and try and like encourage him to go to the bathroom. Like, he is very obviously not ready yet. Yeah, and it's not. And that's okay. And that's and it's fine. Especially because he's not, he's not going to daycare. He's not going to preschool or anything. And it sucks because of the way that his birthday is. Like, he's not going to be going to preschool for a while. Because his birthday is after the cutoff point. Because the cutoff point is August 31st. And his birthday is September 22nd. So, he'll be almost a year older than, like, all of the kids in his class. Because he has to wait an additional year just because he misses the cutoff by one month. I mean, he'll be a year older than all the kids. Well, Baker will be the same. He'll just be the oldest in his class. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, he'll just be the very, the oldest. At least he won't have Carly's problem where her birthday's in the middle of summer and nobody goes to her birthday party because everyone's on summer vacation. Yeah. But yeah, so it's like, I'm not in a rush and so I don't understand why his grandparents are especially because they're not the ones who are here with him every fucking day and who have to change his diapers like why are you so fucking pressed yeah. if he's potty trained or not your mom's never even changed his diaper oh yeah my mom refuses to change either of the kids when even when Carly was a kid and she would babysit occasionally she would deliberately like not change Carly's diaper so the very first thing I would have to do when I pick up Carly would be to change her diaper because my mom would not do it. Which puts you on like a time limit of how long she can oh, yeah. babysit. Oh, yeah. Like you don't want her sitting in that. Right. So it was like we would only leave Carly with her for like a couple hours max. Yeah. And so it's like I don't even have – she's never babysat Caden ever. So I'm just like it's not healthy yeah. for kids to sit. And that's how you get UTIs. That's how you get like bladder issues and stuff. So, and – Caden already has, he has an ectopic kidney, so the risk for him getting UTIs is already a lot mm -hmm. higher. So we have to be very diligent about changing his diaper frequently so that he doesn't get UTIs. So it's like, yeah. I'm not going to risk that by having my mom just refuse to change his diaper because yeah. she doesn't like it. So it's like, I get it. You've raised your kids. You're done. That's fine. But because of that, like, I can't. Yeah, but I'm not going to potty train my kid before he's ready to serve your own uncomfortableness. Yeah. Like that's just, I'm not going to do that. It's yeah. been a whole fucking potty training is rough. Like at least you only have Caden left to potty train. Yeah, you got three more to do after this. Once Caden get his gets his shit together, I'm done. Yeah. I'm hoping, though, that Lincoln will see Baker. Going yeah, potty, they're so close in age that it's that like... Lincoln will, like, maybe potty train sooner than Baker did. Because, mm -hmm. like, even though Baker has Jesse to look up to, they're, like, way far apart in age. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah, that's his big brother, and, like, he loves him and he looks up to him, but, like, they're not that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a little bit different when you're, like two years apart or whatever so mm -hmm. i'm hoping that lincoln will like see baker using the potty and be interested in using it before like baker ever was so yeah and then i've always just heard girls are easier to potty train than boys so hopefully the girls won't be and they're also so close in age yeah they're nine months younger than lincoln to the day um, yeah so hopefully they'll also want to use it soon so but at least we're working on baker and mm -hmm. I haven't had to change his stinky butt 
this will be day three of him at least he's at least been doing really good at like pooping in the potty yeah and the small accidents he's had i think have only been like pee accidents and it's like i can deal with that but yeah that's not a big deal once you poop in your pants like that underwear is going in the garbage yeah and that was our issue with carly's we had the opposite problem that she would go pee just fine but like poop was a whole nother god that it was rough it was so rough the amount of like baths we'd have to give her and the fucking amount of underwear we'd go through it yeah it was a whole yeah. time like nick would clean it and i was like throw that shit away yeah quite literally like literally <laughs> we're not holding on to that we're not gonna yeah. go through no like and it was because we like really pressured her into potty training because at the time like we we were just parents we were new parents we were young and we really fell into that like pressure from the grandparents of like oh it's that time like you really have to do it but because of that like it taught carly like she was scared she was scared to go to the bathroom she was scared of the toilet so she would like hold it as long as she possibly could pushed it out exactly and so it led to these accidents and it took us a long time to like recover from that and so that's why with Caden, like I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. not dealing with that shit again, literally. And luckily, we <laughs> don't have, like, haven't had any pressures. Like, we've gotten asked, like Nick Skimmer that has, like, would ask, like, or oh, like, gonna start potty training, and we would just tell them, like, yeah, it's just not ready. Like when my grandma was alive, and I talked to her occasionally, she would ask, and I was just like, well, he's just not ready, and it was super annoying because she'd be like, well, your dad, when he was nine months old whatever it was he was like not even a year yet and she was like he just didn't like it and he potty trained himself and it's like it was really hard because like my dad was hers and my grandpa's only child it was the only child mm. they had my dad passed away it's uh, almost six years ago now so it was like my grandparents were still alive when my dad died my grandpa's still alive my grandma passed in august and so it's like I get you're like wanting to remember like oh, that was your only child yeah he's gone it's like you want to talk about him and the memories but like times have changed since the 50s lady oh seriously um, and like because she also probably put whiskey on his gums when he was teething you know <laughs> like that was that was the shit you did back then in the 50s I don't know about that because they weren't like big drinkers uh they're Jehovah Witnesses. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, they <laughs> they probably did not do the whiskey thing then. But <laughs> yeah, no. But um, um, she would always tell me that. And she'd be like, "Well, you know, if you just..." and I was like, "I'd be like, come on, he's not ready. Like, yeah, he's not ready. I know he's not ready. And like, when he's ready, we will do it." Yeah. And so now that he like is starting to be ready, we um, I think he, my in laws are gonna go get like a toilet seat for their toilet because yeah he's like nervous to fall into their toilet or whatever. Oh, um, he is such a skinny little dude he's, yeah, that he's like so tiny he um, would fall into a toilet even with the toilet seat. It's yeah like, cutting it close. It is cutting it close. Um, so they because they had asked like do you have like a, and I was like oh we just have a little seat for the potty and it's nice because it has a little hook that goes into the tank so we can just oh hang yeah on to it. Mm-hmm. Carly had one of those. Yeah. yeah. And so we, um, they're like, oh, like we'll have to get one for him here. Mm hmm. Because he goes over there all the time. So, and I texted them today and I was like, oh, but you're doing really good. Like, three yeah. days of being in, this will be his third day being in underwear. He needs to, Grandpa needs to take him to go get ice cream for, to celebrate. <laughs> uh, so they're like, yep, no problem. We'll do it. And so, <laughs> I love that. So it's really nice. So thank gosh. Well, at least be down one butt to change. Yeah. Hopefully soon. And I feel like he's the most difficult one because he is like. I don't know. Lincoln is getting hard to change. Lincoln is feisty. I So I've watched the kids a couple of times and I'll have to change Lincoln. And that that motherfucker likes to fight. Like. (laughs) Well, and he's in this new thing too. Well, not only does he like to fight, he loves to grab himself. Yes. He is always has been obsessed with his junk yeah Um, so you're having to like navigate the hands but then the legs are kicking as well and then he rolls and it's like a whole last wrestling match yeah to change this kid's diaper he'll like put his legs straight up and he's just fucking right on your stomach as you're trying to change him and it's like dude fucking stop he's pretty 
ruthless. It hurts. Yes. He kicks so hard. He's a strong kid. Oh my god. Yeah. He reminds me of Caden when Caden was younger. Like he's just as like uh stocky. Yeah, stocky. That's the word I was looking for as Caden was. Like he's he's strong. Yeah. It fucking hurts. I'm like, god damn it, child. Yeah. It's <laughs> intense. So yeah, hopefully he looks up to Baker and he potty trains real quick because yeah, he's getting he's a bitch to change. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, now the girls are starting to roll over. The girls can yeah. roll from their back to their tummies now. It, Nick got is so frustrated with it too because it like stresses him out when it comes to sleeping. He's like, "Well, oh, they're on their stomachs." <laughs> I'm like, "Well, they're fine now." Like, yeah, they we're want to sleep like me. Yeah, we've passed the point of like concerned yeah but especially because if they can roll back onto their back then they can't do that yet oh well then yeah okay but but still i mean i'm not i already don't sleep that much i'm not gonna yeah sleeping they're fine well yeah but it's like i've seen cora like sit with like her hands oh yeah they and, can like, lift themselves up their yeah. occupational therapist was actually very impressed with them oh. on thir- thursday yeah so, so then nick doesn't need to work if they can he pick just, their like, heads up your then girls are, he goes your daughters are frustrated me with this whole rolling onto their stomach thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my daughters. Oh, um, that's so, how it always is. Yeah. But yeah, so they're trying to roll now, so I'm like, great. They're going to be start to be difficult to change too, because they're going to want to roll and try to change them. And Yeah. What are you going to do when they're all walking? <laughs> You're just going to have a zoo of children running around your I'm house. I'm never going to leave my house. <laughs> no. <laughs> never leave yeah i don't know get like a leash that goes three ways like for dogs <laughs> like dogs have yeah i don't know what else am i gonna fucking do i have no idea yeah it's gonna be interesting it's not like i planned for this lincoln that's, was supposed to be the last girl. that is true that is true <laughs> so all yeah. right well there we go that's this week <laughs> that's our that's our update Thanks for our talking about poop with us. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the conversation today. Yep. I have to go coach a bunch of four, bunch of 14. I have to go coach. Words are hard. Yeah. I feel like that TikTok that you sent me. <laughs> with Joey? Yeah. Bamboon. <laughs> Bamboon. <laughs> what was the other one? Uh Oh. He was trying to talk about the like the chemical that Turkey has oh, in yeah, it, yeah, yeah. but he's he called it fentanyl to start, and, and then T Rex, <laughs> and then Triceratops. Yeah, Triceratops. That's what it was. Um, it's tryptophan. If y'all didn't know, not fentanyl. So I have to go coach fourteen, ten, and eleven year old boys. That's what I was trying to say. There you go. Good Play job. soccer. So yay me! I just have to go to work. And then I have to go grocery shopping afterwards. Oh, my husband did that this morning while we were recording. So yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be my afternoon. It's gonna be great. Yep. Cool. Thanks for joining us on another awkward, fun, unplanned, chaotic episode. Yeah. Yep. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. My voice cracked. It's like a Mexican little boy. <laughs> Do you want to say bye again? Bye!